Let not hate rule thy heart. Let not fear break thy will. Let not wrath cloud thy mind. Let not midnight stand eternal. Blades and Blasters presents Eternal Midnight by Rogue. This is Demon Gate, a fantasy setting filled with horror and grief. Keep your fires high, else perish in the darkness. And at the end of days, the first sign shall appear in the heavens. Justice shall fall upon the world of men. The armies of light and shadow will clash across the fields of eternity. Some large beast stalking the darkness of the woods. The party stays within the cabin for the evening. The journal, the journal of Mara Hill, held troubling news about the fate of the Hill family. Mara was frozen and locked in the storage room of the cottage, left to die. Their three-year-old boy had died from a fever, but the journal entry claims the boy's body was missing. And Edgar Hill, who seems to have gone mad, must still be out there. The party hid the burn in the storage pantry of the cottage to keep keep them from the claws of the beast. A creature that they hoped is a bear, thanks to Hunter's creature lore. As Keltiel delves deeper into the journal of Marahill, she discovers strange information about a black coven in the mountains of Skore. They have three days left to reach the large village. But something bad is happening in the darkness this night. As Keltiel takes watch, she finds herself trying to identify the little boy's doll and gains an eerie feeling about something outside the window. As she peers through it, she notices her dead father standing in the snow at the edge of the light. He smiles to her and waves, walking towards the woods. Keltiel drops the door, the doll on the floor, and now let us return to the story. So, um, Keltiel, I had cut you off before, but you had dropped the doll and then... What were your actions after that? Yes, her almost numb fingers, she drops the doll without even thinking about it and kind of stumbles over to the door, pushing Wrath aside and pushing the door open, looking out into the darkness, trying to find him again. Wrath looks up, what are you doing? And begins to climb to his feet. Keltiel takes a couple steps out onto the porch, looking... My papa! I saw him! Your <clears throat> father? Yes. In the trees. And now looking out there, you can't see him. You saw which direction he walked, uh, which was to the east, uh, over here into the woods, but once you got to the door and looked out, he was gone already. 
Uh, yeah, the rest of you are asleep except for the hunter and wrath. Keltiel. Keltiel. Leave it alone. How does it know? They have their ways. She takes a deep breath and steps back, slowly closing the door. I, I know it can't be my papa. And she walks back over, picks up the doll, where he dropped on the floor, looks at it. I think... I get a funny feeling from this doll. And I want to look outside, and that's when I see my papa. Oh, uh, you, yeah, you can make a perception check. Let's see if you wake up from the noise of everybody talking. And Kat, you know, can you make a world tour check? Hey, can we hold on one second? I think Discord's having yeah. an issue. Yeah. I'm getting roboed. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm red right now. I don't know about it. Yeah, me too. I think it's... And then, Keltiel, could you make a willpower check? As well. Okay, cool. Yeah, your... Your draw to go outside and see your father, um... Um... Is strong, of course, but, uh... The logic behind Hunter and Wrath talking to you kind of keeps you settled by it. And you don't lose any uh, uh, points to your mental fatigue or anything. Uh, but Priestess Yuya does waken, awaken from the, from the talk. Uh, as she's talking about the doll and seems a little bit worried. Uh, Yuya sits up and rubs her eyes. Um... What's going on? Uh, Keltia looks over to her and um, bites her lip. I, I think this doll is black magic. I was holding it and I looked out the window and I thought I saw someone. Uh, who? And she gets to her feet, so rubbing her eyes and walking over to Keltio. It doesn't matter. It it could not have been him. Oh, maybe we should be getting rid of the doll then. There's a fire. Maybe we could burn it. Throw it in the fire now. Maybe that is best. She holds the doll <clears throat> and looks out the window again, fighting the urge just to peek and see if he's out there, but eventually she walks over and tosses the doll into the flames. The doll erupts kind of a blue mm -hmm. flame engulfs it. And you can see almost, almost looks like a dark, sickly smoke is leaving, leaving the remains as it burns away. Uh, and eventually it's just gone. This is clearly how they saw the child in the woods. I wonder where the doll came from. Maybe it was a, a gift from someone who meant the family harm. The witches. Yes. Perhaps. Perhaps this mirror was more involved with them than I can make out from the journal.
<sighs> Let us get some sleep so we can leave this place. Uh, I agree. Let us get back to sleeping then, hopefully. No more shuttles outside to disturb us. And after that, you do end up sleeping, and sleeping through the night. Uh, there's no other other concerns at night, and there's a few wolf howls and everything. But uh, other than that, um, you don't even hear the beast getting any closer to the to the cottage at all. And the two suns do rise the next morning. Avos is getting ready. Checking on the uh, on the creatures outside when everybody starts to wake up, and he looks back. Well, they're still Hello. alive. I'm Tet Knock from Blades and Black. Well, that's a a good thing. I did hope they'd still be around. Kind of be needing them. Yes. <laughs> We're all ready to leave then. More than ready. Hey. What about the cottage? Are we to burn it? That might be the best idea. If we leave it, more travelers might stay here. It would be safer for anyone else who comes through if it were not here as a temptation clear everything we intend to keep out I'll see to the burning and with that you guys need anything else from this place <clears throat> I don't think so Wrath puts his newly acquired book into his um, pouch or sack or whatever and walks behind Keltiel off the porch. You notice after Evos hooks up the uh, the burr into the the cart, the wagon, he uh, he actually grabs the shovel as well and keeps it, puts it in the back. And he gets aboard the wagon and takes the reins. Well then, goodbye to your hill family. May, may they rest well in, in death. No, I fair, fair, fair better in the spirit world, I hope. Aye. As long as... Their intentions were pure. Aye, they'd be resting well. At least the one. We do not know where the husband is. Caltiel looks out into the forest. Her arms crossed. Halfway expecting the husband to show up. Let us go. You have the burren ready? Ava says, yes. And with that, you guys ride off back onto the road again. I'm going to make a roll and see how the weather's going to turn out this day okay so it's not so bad partly cloudy light breeze there'll be some light snow still as you guys are back onto the road did the hunter have any difficulty getting the house no, the uh, fire 
uh, can be seen from the road too as you guys are going as we're on the road Keltiel's going to get out a few of her portable tools a mortal and mortar and pestle start grinding some of the herbs preparing them for use I did find some things of use in that cabin, at least. Oh, that'd be good. You can make some of your, um, potions and such with it. Yes, uh, some of these herbs are more useful on their own. Um, here. I did find some fire leaf. It's not easily found back at the temple. And <clears throat> as she finishes grinding it up, you know, she adds a little bit of a liquid to it, making a paste and stuffs it into a bottle, a spare little bottle and she or more of a jar and hands it to her sister. Uh, one for me and one for you. I thank you, sister. She puts it by, uh, puts in her cloak. That one gives you plus one will, plus 20 mana, and 2d6 mana regen, so mm. that's a good one for when you really need it. Nice. You guys notice, too, that you haven't seen any guilt around, which are kind of like the, the deer or the elk of um uh, you've been here and of course that they've been vanishing and it's been uh, six seven days you know and you haven't seen any at all which is troubling they'd oftentimes run across the road or you know you see them in the woods sometimes but it's been very bare of most animals actually it's been strangely quiet in the woods I had heard from the village hunters that the Gelt are getting hard to find, but I expected to see more out here away from the village. It is strange. Mm, maybe those predictions are right. And she'll I'll look out to the hunter walking around. Oh. Avos says, um, have you seen any game back there, Hunter? Nothing. Only that which sought to take us down last night, I believe. But even then, I didn't see that. No tracks? No spore? Nothing that I've seen. It's obvious. I'll look more closely at the next camp, but this is the way it goes. This is how it starts. The uh, what starts? The dead eat everything. People, animals. It is all fuel. It is clear that there are lack of food. The savages that attacked us were starving. None can compete with the undead for food sources. They devour everything. And then they run out of guilt. I suppose they will be coming to the villages. If they haven't already. Yes, I suppose we will sure find out shortly. Hopefully they haven't made it that far. If it is undead, we do not know that. 
I... Hmm. You don't know it yet. If there are undead, then there must be an undead maker. I wonder if these bitches, and she holds out the journal, might be the cause of more of this trouble. Witches have been known to work alongside necromancers. It is hard to distinguish practitioners of the dark arts. Rogue, um, just to step back, the the cave that you were talking about, there was um, the journal said something about a stone inside that created unde or brought people back to life, right? Yeah. Uh, the the God Stone is what they called it. Uh, I think the journal talked about a cave that was near where he li liked to play at as well. The boy. Yeah. And that was down by a creek. Which isn't really that far from there. Wrath. Nods Keltio. The journal. That cave. I wonder if that would hold the answer. Though in my opinion, we should not seek trouble that is not put before us. We will go to Scorae eh? and do what we were hired to do, but uh, I do not think that we can ignore this trouble for long. If it is trouble bad enough to kill all the food in the area. Maybe the Moon Goddess would be wanting us to figure this out and see if we can purge whatever evil lays here. Whatever evil is taking away the guilt. One thing is sure. When we get to Scorae, and she reaches into her pack and pulls out <clears throat> the white robe she had worn in the temple. It's wrinkled and stained, but still noticeably temple clothing. She puts it on. I am your assistant. I would not be surprised if in Scorae, people with other than the holy magic might be under suspicion these days. Oh. Well, um, I think your robes are a bit dirty for that, but... I think, uh, I could manage to convince him that you're, um... And she looks her sister up and down, looking at her robes. You can see she's judging the stains, the wrinkles. Mm, no. Maybe someone who has finally seen the light. Yes, that's that sounds believable. Well, whatever you feel comfortable with. We needn't say anything at all, if you don't wish to say a lie, but let them come to their own conclusions. Unless the moon goddess chooses to reveal who you truly are, then I do not mind having you pose as an acolyte. Why does it matter unless you do some magic in front of people? You do not seem like you would pass very well as a priestess. Well, I did grow up in the temple. I can probably do a better job than you think. And if I do need to do some magic, perhaps they will not look on it unkindly if I am wearing these robes. Hopefully no magic's gonna be half in uh, the city besides the exorcism. We do what we need to do. And if the moon goddess presents us with any other paths, we take them. But other than that, I think we head back to the city, to the village. So I can get back to the temple.
Wrath gives a look on his face as though he is displeased, but does not say anything further. Ava's, uh, you can tell he's been deep in thought the whole time, kind of just slapping the reins here and there. And then he, uh, looks back over his shoulder again towards the hunter. Yeah, I've been thinking. No little tiny creatures, but maybe the predators, the ones that are good at survival. You know, obviously, the varg, the wolves, and the bear. Yes, I have some concerns about that as well. Ah, this is troubling, because soon, when the winter comes, and the Algor, there will be three months of darkness. And if the legends are true, that means the undead will not be stopped by the sunlight. Wrath looks very confused. This is not winter. No. Pretty soon it'll be winter, though. His mouth hangs agape. How can that be? He says, this is still the fall. We are very far up north. Why would people not living this far north migrate south? This is madness to live in such a place. <laughs> I don't know. And he looks over at you and kind of up and down for a minute. <sighs> where have you where have you been all this time? Asleep or something? Perhaps. I am not from these lands. And he nods. I hope my suspicions are not true. Uh, what is this? Up ahead. And the, he kind of slows the wagon. I will say it's been a good couple of hours now. And you see a dead creature. Hopefully you guys can see that. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I did kind of a poor Photoshop job here. It was pretty quick, but... <laughs> Uh, Avo comes off of the cart and walks over to it. It's a, it's a goat. A goat? Oh no, the goat. It's a, it's been mauled, but this is the first one we've seen in a while. He walks over to investigate it. Uh, you're kind of off the road a little bit. Uh, woods on both sides still. Hunter will walk up and be looking around the woods, but is going to be approaching the gelt as well because he wants to look at the wounds. See if it's fresh. If so, be wary. And... Um, everybody can make perception checks. Hunter, you can roll a creature lore if you like. It seems very fresh. Um, and it does appear that there's blood trails leaving uh, footprints in the snow. It looks like possibly wolves. 
The priestess definitely sees that it's dead. Look it over. Wolves. And it looks pretty fresh, you said? Yeah, it looks like really, really fresh. I'm gonna look out to where the blood trails go and see if I see any movement off in that direction. Who got the highest perception there, too? Um, Kaltiel. Kaltiel, you notice movement up ahead of you guys on the trail. Uh, you can see a, a wolf coming out of the woods and one, another one on the other side watching from the trees. Wolves? Wolves up ahead. We should get back to the burn now. I maybe light some fires near them. Scare them away. I'll fire a warning shot at them. See if it scares them away. Yeah, Keltiel's gonna do that. She's gonna point her finger toward the wolves and fire at them. Not worrying too much about actually hitting one as setting something on fire in that general area. Okay. So what we'll do is um, let's uh, start off the initiative. And Keltiel, you're, uh, you'll actually go first. Do you want us to actually roll, or...? Yeah. Because something looks wrong with these wolves. As now you start to see... It looks like parts of their faces and things, and the sides of them are rotten. Yeah. And they're growling, and not really behaving normally as most would be a little bit afraid perhaps it seems like these are not afraid at all so yeah when you throw the first uh, firebolt uh, Okay. We'll see if it actually hits it. It does. You can go ahead and roll damage on that one. Um... The multiplier is just times one, right? That doesn't go two. up with level. Oh, okay. Yeah, it'll go to two. And that one actually explodes in flames and kills it. Um, and you can throw another one if you like. Continue your Great. actions. Nice. You want to do uh, this one here? Um, I'm not seeing anything other than the gout. Oh. Yeah, they're, I think they're in the wrong layer, probably. Sorry, I gotta move you guys to the area. And can you guys just place yourselves around the, uh, the wagon? How? Oh, yeah, sure. Mm. Trying to trying to use uh, your uh, tactic of this, using the same map there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, is that a bear or no, or just a big wolf? That one token yeah. that's big. Yeah, that one's a big one. Okay, um, and then there's one in the middle, broken fang. 
Um, I think that she's going to go for taking out numbers before going for the big one. So she'll aim for Broken Fang. Okay. This will be your second action. Your target number will be 10, actually. Oh, she already rolled oh, 19. Oh, you rolled, you rolled 19. So you hit. So, damage now? Mm-hmm. Spell effect is 16 damage. Yep. Mm. And that one kills that one as well. So what's that look like? Keltiel had just hopped down out of the wagon, spotted the wolves, and immediately the chain fangs just exploded into flames. She turns a little and sees the big one and the other one points at the smaller wolf and it also erupts into a column of flame uh, she steps back and was breathing hard for a moment with the effort and um, let's let someone else take their turn okay hunter so hunter back pedals from the gelt and uh, I will draw an arrow and fire it at big, this bigger wolf that is there. Okay. And you can see he's got a little bit of cover behind the, with the bush, but he's a pretty big one, so. Besides, it is a bush. I'm not getting plus one. Oh. He double plus, I, he would have passed. He would have beaten it? He yeah. Have okay, cool. Alright, the first arrow flies past him. Um, did you, you had the bow in your hand, right? You could draw with a second and use a frenzy to fire the, the second shot if you want. No, I will draw with a second, though. Okay. And it'll be the wolf's turn. Avo shouts, Don't let them get the Baron! This one definitely makes it two Avos. It charges right up to him and it tries to heavy attack him with its teeth. Avos tries to defend. You're dodging. Avos jumps to the side and it misses. The other one runs around the bush. Big. And let's see. I'm going to roll a D6. Um, and we'll say. One, two, Hunter, three, four, Keltiel, five, six, the burn. He's running at Keltiel. Okay. Big, nasty one. He comes in and he tries to bite a, a quick attack, and then he's going to try another quick attack. At Keltiel. First one is eight. 
So I roll the defense physical. Physical defense, yeah. And you defend against that sidestep. He tries another bite at you. It's a six. Oh, she's quick. Nice. And the other ones, I believe, are only going to get to move. Eight, nine, ten. No, he can actually make it there. This one runs straight towards Wrath, and it is going to try a heavy attack at Wrath. Okay. Now, can I block with my you shield? You can, actually. Mm -hmm. and that, Which would give you. Is that under defense? Physical defense, and then when the modifier pops up, you'll hit three. Okay. Oh, gosh. Ah, oh, not enough time to get shield up or something. Yeah. This is going to be... Times two power damage. 14 damage. So your armor actually soaks five of that, so you take nine from your hit points. Okay. And that's on your green, if you, uh... Nine, uh, yep. Mm -hmm. And if you just click the green and then hit negative nine. Um, I don't want to kill Tep, but that was a crit fail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And we're gonna see, uh... Your helmet or mask is damaged. So if you're not wearing a helmet or a mask, are you? No. Okay. So he did bite you in the face, then uh, gets you like in the side of the head. You can feel maybe his teeth going in underneath your jawline and and uh, around your ear. Uh, nasty bite. Uh, it's not over your body attribute, I don't believe. Uh, uh, no, my body is like. 18. Yeah, eighteen or something. Yeah. Yeah. So you do not get knocked to the ground from it. Um, and then the last one charges, but it only gets to here. Uh, let's get him over here. All right, that one is right there. Okay, and now it is Wrath's turn. Yeah, Wrath, not able to bring his shield up in time as it leaps over and tears at his face. Ah! He just makes a huge overhand swing. Um, so the whatever the what's it called the rage attack is that it? Yeah. Do you, uh... nice sixteen to hit. Roll low. Hits. And the modifier is two on my short sword now? Uh, no, or, modifier. No, I, mean, I mean my power. My power. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That decimate. Like, nice. He's horribly dead. Yeah, How's that look? Like? Right, just anger. Just You see his eyes like flash this blue pale light to anybody who would be looking, which might not be anyone. But the sword just splits the thing's head. And as it does, it doesn't even stop. It just goes straight through its head, and it just slumps in the snow. Blood and guts just flying everywhere. Um, so I'm going to move with my movement. I can do that, right? Yeah, if you're, if you're burning Frenzy... I would uh, plan on it afterwards, yeah. That's when you would stop, but... Um... Yeah, you could move to here and have cut him in half if you wanted to, if that was your, what you were planning well, on doing. I, oh, I, so I have to move before I attack? Is that correct? You can move um, uh, before or after, but it, once you get to the point where you're burning Frenzy, you can't move anymore. Okay. Uh, but, but you could have totally done that, yeah. Um, okay, because what I want to do is uh, move here. And these things aren't considered next to each other. Is that correct? Mm. They're adjacent to me, but maybe not to each other. 
Yeah, they're two hexes apart. So he moves down here, and I'm going to burn uh, it, one one frenzy for one action. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he will do a quick attack on Fang. I can do that, right? For one frenzy? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll take my frenzy away. Oh, cool. Thank you. Defense is the 13 and it fails. Damage, short sword. Wah. Terrible. Five damage. So you slice it and wound it, and you can burn another one if you want. I'm going to, actually. You can burn up to two each round. And so he moves, he just pushes past this thing. He's enraged. His blood is trickling down the side of his face. He slices it across the side and then tries to come down um, onto the spine of the creature, attacking it one more time. A quick attack. Oh, man. Oh, just barely defends. Huh. And Tiger's defender. And then it is the priestess's turn. So the priestess looks over to her sister being charged at by the big wolf. Wrath being bitten and uh, viciously attacked by the one that he fully gutted. Kind of decides uh, which one to take out. And she... Raises a hand up to Fang down here, and she releases an Aether Bolt. The Aether Bolt. That's a big. Sorry. Uh, Fang. Okay. The wounded one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First one flies past it. You want to do another one? Mm. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna try again. Um, she's a bit frustrated that it didn't hit, and uh, we'll attempt again. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> you wanna pray to the gods? Oh, I'm gonna pray. Oh, uh, please. Oh, gotta. Oh, uh, she's playing Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Maybe>. no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do you... Oh, um, is it time for Wrath to go home via portal? <laughs> <laughs> portal. Ooh. Portal. <laughs> Spell fails badly. It causes an extra D20 times level of drain. Let's mm. roll 1D20. Yeah. It's D20 oh times God. two, isn't it? She's level two. Yeah. So. Holy <laughs> moly. How, much, she... how oh. much drain is that? Oh, uh, she took 32. Let's see, hold up. 32. How much mana do you have left? Uh, it's 32 plus uh, the original cost, right? Yeah, it says extra. So whatever the cost oh, is. Oh, she's what... fucking down. Because mm. when How you hit negative? zero mana, it's... You get a six. Okay, so that's actually 12 damage to her physically. <laughs> and she, um, yeah, she does fall unconscious. Yes. <laughs> so she uh, raises a hand, firing the first Aether Bolts. And it kind of just goes wild on Fang. She gets very frustrated. Ah, damn it. Come on, Grana. And she raised her hand again, firing, and it kind of fizzles. And she looks at her hand, a bit confused. 
And it kind of sparks, her hand lighting up. Kind of a go, uh, spark going through her body as she's you know, damaged by this and she falls to the ground. Ah! Alright. And Keltiel's turn. Keltiel can't quite see what's happening on the other side of the wagon, but she sees her sister's form crumple to the ground, but she's got this big wolf in front of her, barring the way, so she is going to try to get it out of the way with fire. Oh no! Oh my oh god! My god. Oh, oh no, the sisters fail at the same time! Wrath, Keltiel, and Yuya have both, all three, rolled critical failures. <laughs> oh That's my crazy, god! crazy, because we were rolling so well at the beginning. <laughs> so, can, can the ancestors help me, or is oh, that ancestors. something the priestess can no, do? No, the ancestors did not help you! I mean, I, I rolled it already. <laughs> alright, alright, uh, so magic. Oh. Oh, good! <laughs> no, <laughs> this again. Target of the spell is all in within 15 feet. Well, you at least uh, you hit the big. Oh, hold on. And maybe Yuya. So yeah, you got Yuya. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yuya has 20 points of fire resistance. Uh, you could still have... roll badass and kill her. It's true, but I'm saying <laughs> it, she'll probably be okay. You might not be. You're also going <laughs> to set the wagon on fire. <laughs> <laughs> the burn. Our food, oh, our food, God. our cart. Okay, so Hunter, you get a chance to defend with a uh, target number dex check of 12. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. This is what I wanted. <laughs> TPK session three. Oh, Thank nice. You, God. <laughs> Thanks, God. It took two sixes. Thanks, God. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I can't do shit. <laughs> Alright, Big's gotta defend too, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Oh, Hunter defended. Nice. Yeah, I... <laughs> oh I don't like fire either. <laughs> Turns out. And he does not, so he takes... Whatever the damage is. Do you want me to roll for damage? Oh no. Yeah, go ahead and uh I guess do roll that. the one. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say you you don't worry about it. The uh oh, she's the, yeah, wagon, she, the well, wagons. The wagon's kind of in the way. I think the wagon might well, catch Well, Like I said, she's got twenty points of fire resist <laughs> I mean of fire resistance, so because we're both dragon girls and she just got ten more. Yeah, that's She's good either. It's like way. it was meant to be. Mm -hmm. 14. I yep. Okay, so Big takes 14. It actually kills him. No. <laughs> okay. Um, can she try to douse for her second <laughs> action? Yes, because uh, <laughs> yeah, the wagon's on fire. Right. And, and probably the bird. <laughs> yeah. And the th thankfully the burn are pretty pretty tough. They have like 40 uh, HP. Oh god. So nobody's <laughs> resisting a douse. So. Right. So your your spell your spell works. <laughs> Just don't roll one on the douse. That's all you need. <laughs> yeah. You catch yeah. on fire trying to put it out. <laughs> oh my god. Ignite instead of douse. Holy shit. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> Everybody's okay. okay. And then it'll be Hunter's turn. Can she move, by the way? Or because she acted twice, she can't? Yeah, you can. You okay, can. I'm going like to try to move closer yeah, just... to you, yeah. She, can, she has movement of four, so... Okay. And Hunter. So Hunter would have had to, like, dodge or duck down from the fire, and he'd just look at Kelty, obviously just... a. She can't tell, but he's displeased. <laughs> and, uh, she seems he, super psyched. He, he, he just kind of grunts under his breath and um, with the uh, arrow drawn, 
already. I'm going to move. <laughs> oh my god. Both of the magics failed. <laughs> oh no. Uh, he's going to move around the cart um, to the back here. There. Kind of moving around the side of it. Okay. We'll see the the melee going on between Wrath Avos and the two wolves. And it's going to take I believe this is the clear shot I have. Well you is on the ground, so you'd be shooting over her head. But and... you're in my way. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I would probably I would Hunter would take the clear shot. I would actually take aim because my arrow's already drawn. And then uh, I would fire at Black Fang, so aim would give me, I think, a plus two to hit. Oh, that's a ho I'm hoping that's initiative for <laughs> Yeah, that was Ava's. Okay. For some reason, it didn't go before. So he'll probably go after you. Right. So I'll take my shot um, at, at the at Black Fang. Okay. There you go. Oh, nice. Mighty. And that's a critical hit, so power damage times two. And that is a kill. The hunter comes around the side of the wagon as Keltio is putting out fires of her own doing. And, uh,. Sees Avos fighting the wolf, knocks his arrow back, draws it, aims for the head, and fires it. Watching the arrow cleanly sail through one of its ears and out the other as it slumps into the ground. That's it. Avos is going to run over, draw his blade, and uh, try to attack Fang. With his long sword. Tag is nine. Got him. Nice. That's horrible. Um, it is wounded. Let's see. Oh, yeah. It puts it directly at uh, zero. Oh, no, it does not. It actually has two hit points left because of its armor. Um... Avis is going to try to burn Frenzy, uh, so he's going to burn one Frenzy and try to finish it off. Because it attacks next, too. That would be horrible, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Good solid hit, but he misses. Ah, uh, it's going to uh, jump up and now that does attack. that does say Avos's defense roll. I don't know if they have a difference in modifier or whatever. You probably just clicked on uh, the wrong token. Yeah, I did. But what's what's well? You don't have to re-roll. It's just what modifiers are. Let's see. Avos has a definitely a better one. Um. Says, as long as it's not a negative, he would pass. Uh, okay, yeah, he's good. Um, yeah, Fang jumps up and is going to heavy attack Amos. It's a 15. Amos is going to try and dodge. Dodge. 
He does so. Not a natural 20, but um, after that, it is Wrath's turn. Um, Wrath aims and tries to stab the thing in the back. Um, aim is plus one to the attack, is that right? Um, yeah, oh yeah, that's only with uh, uh, bows. And oh, I see. And gotcha, stuff. gotcha. Alright, I'll just do a quick attack. And now, it is hit. And that'll just be regular damage, and that kills it. Yeah, as it turns around to attack Avos, Wrath simply stabs it through the back, in the lower back disconnecting its spine, driving the tip of the blade through the belly, and he raises his foot up and just stomps on it to clear the blade and rips it out, and then even after it's dead, he begins just hacking at it in anger, and he will hack at it until it's completely torn to pieces. All right. Keltiel's kneeling in the snow, trying to determine what happened to her sister. She probably recognizes it as mana fatigue. But how how long does it take to recover from that? She she starts to wake up actually. Uh, you know, not that long afterwards. Uh, in rounds, it'd be quite some time probably. But she, uh, you know, it's within a few. 30 seconds or so before a minute uh, starts to blink her eyes um, Yuya looks up at her sister and looks around sits up a bit in pain uh, what what happened did we are they gone Shh, yes everything is fine uh do you need the fire leaf? Uh, I... And she kind of wipes her nose and looks at the blood. She looks a bit shocked as she sees her own blood, really, for... Well, the first time coming out of her nose, anyway. And she looks up to Keltiel. Uh, I might be good. I'm, I'm in quite some pain, sister. Here, let me help you back into the wagon. Okay. So Keltiel will completely ignore everybody else's wounds and help her sister back into the wagon. Avos actually comes over and tries to help you up too. You have a little bit of mental fatigue, at least from one point. Uh, you're not suffering anything yet. It's kind of like a warning. The first point is pretty tired and agitated. Um, after she gets her sister situated in the wagon, she's going to get out her mortal and mortar and pestle again. And she didn't have time to prepare everything before, but she'll start to smash the witch hazel into a paste and add some melted snow to it, um, add it to some clean bandages and, um, Help Avos approach Wrath. Wrath is standing over this now very, very cut up <laughs> corpse of a creature and is continuing to hack at it, stab at it, kick it. Yeah, Hunter will try to grab his sword wrist in one of the swings. You grab. Ah! and turns and to face you. Save your energy. There'll be more. <sighs> you see his eyes are almost shining 
they're so blue. And it's very clear as he begins to calm, they fade and diminish in intensity. And, uh, LTL. Hunter, you go ahead. Hunter will pull some rags, um, clean, it's clean the rags as he can out of his side pack and toss them to Rath. No, 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 not that. Uh, I have something better. She had stood back a little bit, seeing how Wrath was still kind of in a battle frenzy, but now she approaches somewhat cautiously with the witch hazel salve that she's made and had placed on this bandage. Your pretty face, it, uh, it needs a little fixing. <sighs> The creature bit me. Yes, I can see that. Kneel down here. I will clean the wound and apply this. Perhaps it will not leave a scar. He reaches up and touches his face and seems surprised. I... This should be... And he looks very confused. I... it should heal on its own. What? I... Well, it will heal on its own if we clean it and give it time, but this poultice will help it along. He... still looks slightly confused, but nods and kneels in front of Keltiel. And she'll be... Very gentle compared to her demeanor. Clean the wound, make sure that, um, unfortunately, she has to use a bit of wine to clean it, and she warns you. This will sting for a moment. He doesn't respond, just looks up at you. And she applies some of the wine to the wound after having cleaned it with water. It burns quite a bit. His nose flares, but makes no other n mention of the pain. And she'll take the the bandage that she's made, and she'll try to cut it to the size of the wound on your face, and hold it there until the the paste helps it stick. Uh, not a very good way to get that to stay, but uh, if you don't move around too much, it should stay on. Do you want to keep that there for the rest of the day, if you can? And in game mechanics terms, the Witch Hazel does... I'll have to look. Um, plus D10 hit points is the only thing that really... Um, App applies to you. Uh, should I roll that rogue? Um, Keltiel, or um, if she's treating you, she can add that also to her healing skill if she has one, or if she doesn't have a healing skill, uh, add it to her intelligence roll as well. Okay, I don't think I have healing. So yeah, you would just do intelligence, and then when it comes up modifier, put D10 uh, exclamation point. Yeah, Priestess Uyatis. <laughs> right. Yeah, she's used her own uh, healing powders on herself. Okay. Uh, you can actually do that as well, You uh, Use your healing skill and top it with um, that if you, you, you know, if you're applying a healing herb or something, uh, when the modifier comes up, you can add that to it if you want to. Avos noticed something as well. As he sees Hunter looking at the wolves, and um, he, he says, uh, I thought the, un the undead, they turn to ash when they die or something. And these do not look undead. They just look rotten. They're not undead. They must be some kind of disease. What kind of disease can do this? They should not even be alive. Um, 
she gives Wrath a little pat on the shoulder, uh, indicating that she's done. She moves over to where Avos and Hunter are. Did Avos got hurt too, didn't he? Uh, I don't think so. No. Nope. No. Nope. Nope. Okay. Uh, he's uh, he's he, Avos starts to look at the uh, uh, the burn. He says, "Oh, this one." It's a burn on its side there. It's okay. It's okay. And he starts putting it. Uh, Keltia will go over. Uh, how bad is it? Um, it's not, it's not horrible. I mean, uh, you might, you know, if you don't want to waste a healing herb, you could just do a regular intelligence check to cheat it. Treat yeah. it up. And... She'll at least pick up some snow and start rubbing it on there. You can see its fur kind of quivers and stuff when you touch it. Uh, the priest is, uh, your headache is kind of going away and your nose has stopped bleeding after the herbs. Yeah, she, um, she sits at the back a bit frustrated with herself, kind of thinking why that happened, how it happened. She just kind of sits on the bench and closes her eyes and just starts to meditate. Hunter looks over to Burr and at Keltiel as she's putting the ice and snow on the wounds of the creature. Are we going to have to worry about your fire going forward? Fire is dangerous. Ask the three dead wolves. More dangerous when the one who controls it loses that control. She shrugs. I do what I must. It is better to get a little singe than to have one's throat torn out by a wolf. I don't use it without reason. Are you, I didn't get you, did I? She looks at him. Not for lack of trying. But forget about it. And Hunter just goes back to looking over the wolves. And Avas looks over there towards Keltia and he says, We did better against the Undar. <laughs> At least we're all still alive. Mm. This is very strange, though. She looks down and stares at that corpse. Do they... It looks like a disease, or do they... I mean, do they have actual, like, bones sticking out or anything, or they just look really sick? Yeah, some of them do. Some of them have bone showing, and uh, the meat around it kind of looks blackened and necrotic. Mm. And, Did uh... I'm sorry, go ahead. Do they have blood? Like, regular-looking they... blood? They do. They do. And uh, Avos goes over and he, he says the same thing about the guilt. The guilt, it looks similar too. I mean, it's hard to tell from all of the tearing up the flesh and things. But this wound here on its leg, it's blackened meat like it rotted. That's not from the bite. Keltiel looks a little disturbed for a moment, and she looks over at Wrath. Are we sure no one else was bitten? If this was some sort of illness, you must make sure to clean your wounds immediately. Do you see wounds on these creatures, besides what we have inflicted? He nods towards the wolves. It would be impossible to tell. It could have started as the smallest bite or scratch. I doubt it is as such. It is likely a curse, not an injury. Very possible, but still. Perhaps this is the way it was spread. Perhaps.
Avis is looking over towards Wrath, a kind of worried look on his face. Well, I guess we'll know soon enough. I hope we don't see your face starting to rot off tonight. That would be unpleasant. He looks sidelong at Avos. For you, certainly. I do not believe the four of you could take me down without me killing at least three of you. <laughs> Overestimate yourself. He, Hunter will stand up and put his bow over his shoulder. Kelty, I'll just snort. <laughs> Climbs back in the wagon. <laughs> Starts asking her sister how she's feeling. And you can see um, Yuya as you tr start talking to her. She's got her eyes closed in the back of the in the back of the carriage. As you talk to her, she frowns a bit. And she looks over at you. Mm. I'm fine. And you can see she's looking about, uh, a bit better. There's a little bit of dried blood under her nose, but overall she looks a lot better than she was. Just tired. Ah, you look better. Well, I'm glad that the moon goddess had us get out of that one. Those wolves, they did not touch you. No. My... She looks down at her hands, still frowning, pursing her lips a bit. I am not sure why, but my magic seemed to betray me. That one, Wrath, he thinks that it is a curse that has afflicted these creatures, perhaps. Such a curse has caused our magic to go slightly awry. I too felt something disrupting. I don't think a curse could enable magics blessed by the moon goddess to be able to falter as such. Uh, maybe we should figure out what it is. I do not wish them to be affected. Wrath is sitting on the bench across from you talking about this. Or perhaps you are incompetent. My incompetence killed more than yours. Did it? Three versus your two. He smiles. You both did a wonderful job. And my face is still pretty. <laughs> I could have many scars and my face would still be prettier than yours. She snorts again. <laughs> I have the beholder and all that. He actually smiles. It's almost the first jest you've probably heard him say. Ah, oh, Avos, are the burn okay to walk? Alright, let us go then. Go ahead. I've got another fire to start. And he uh, slaps the wagon. You guys start to take off again. Yeah, Wrath walks to the back of the wagon and hops out to watch Hunter as he completes his duties, so he's protected. He might be aloof, but he's pragmatic as well. And Yuya closes her eyes again as they walk off trying to meditate again. She was interrupted before. She's a bit frustrated, but tries to relax. And with that, 
um, several hours pass by of the wagon again, you can actually get um, uh, meditation for several hours. If you roll d20, you can times that by six, and that's how much mana you can get back for meditation and sleep in the wagon. You roll what? <clears throat> a d20. A d20 times six. And... Yes, I don't think that works. That's impossible. <laughs> I think you have to do like a star for the multiplication. Yeah, I think so. Oh, 36 anyway. And um, you guys set up camp again that night. Uh, Avis is over there collecting the wood. As you guys have found a place to camp. Uh, can you guys all see that? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Any other duties going on uh, for the camp to set up or anything? Cooking and trapping. Herb hunting in the general area. Okay. You can do a plant lore skill check. Not 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 tonight. No herbs. We still have a fair bit of meals, right? Yeah, actually, um, a great deal of it's been wrapped up in that wax paper, uh, preserved by the salt, and um, and you're able to cook it and make it better, putting it in a stew and such. Um, yeah, thankfully they, they packed enough for you to actually make it there and back, uh, as long as you keep that wagon safe. Not burn it to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> She's got douse and ignite. <laughs> that, That's that is why a good they thing. come as a pair. <laughs> yeah, it works. And... You, you're going to do some prayers that night? Yeah, she's going to do her usual prayers. Um, she's fairly quiet through the whole trip. The night seems to be kind of reflecting inward a lot on what happened, but she does her usual prayers and comes back, looks to wrath. Do you want me to read again? Wrath is... Kind of fiddling with his bandage, sitting next to the fire. He looks up. Yes, if you would, I would mm. be thankful. Oh well, if you stop fiddling, I'll uh, make sure to read right quick. And she'll move over to him and sit down next to him. Can hold out a hand. He turns and fishes into his pack and pulls out the book handing it over to Yuya and she takes it and resumes her place from the other night starts reading it again he asks have you read anything about someone called vengeance can I uh, do a theology check to see <laughs> That one's probably going to be a pretty hard one. All right, let's hope. Oh! He knows all. Oh. That was um, Damn. an angel, you believe, um, that fought in the uh, um, the Ever War. Um, it's it's a legend about the demon lords, the six demon lords, and uh, led by Baal, and uh, the angels that are said to, the angels in the Nephilim that are said to have saved the humans and all of the slave races on this world. Mm -hmm. 
much she kind of reiterates that. And it was a war that they fought for us, apparently. Or to keep us safe. He suddenly, he suddenly comes to some sort of realization. He's like, what does it say about wrath? Well, uh, I actually fought in these wars. Mm. Wrath, not vengeance. Wrath. Oh, wrath. Oh. Um, what I know about that? <laughs> uh... <laughs> Let's make another theology check. Okay. Mm. Yeah, you you know that um, the vengeance and there's several names that are similar, and now you're kind of you're kind of realizing at the moment that uh, wrath, vengeance. You know, there were several angels with these names, and perhaps he's picked this name for himself or something. You don't, you don't know, but you didn't hear about Wrath, and you can't see him, find him in the book yet. Yeah, she looks over the book and shakes her head. Uh, no, there are many with very similar names. Vengeance, Wrath, Envy, that kind of thing. But specifically, only can find things on Vengeance. But hard, not long. Nothing specifically about Wrath. She looks to him. Hmm. I'm guessing you'd be interested in these types of books. Maybe. This book, certainly. He's, like, breathing very heavy as he was, like, extremely excited. And he still seems very amped up. I do thank you. I and you can see you is a little bit uncomfortable with the heavy breathing and she uh <laughs> see she kinda leans back a bit and looks at the book a bit wide eyed and uh do you want me to keep breathing? Yes, please. Um, Alright, uh, just keep control of yourself. And she continues reading on. <laughs> yeah, he he listens with bated breath, just is watching so intently, just staring, not at her as she reads, but at the book, but is transfixed clearly. It was, um, tends to the fire for a bit, and, uh, he says, um, have any of you ever fought in a war? But, Avos, you know I haven't. This is, uh... But, uh, but you two. No, Hunter, Wrath. Hunter looks, um, at the fire that's sitting there on the... on a stump or something nearby. And the War of the Living and the Dead, though no one cares to know about it. Not what you mean by war. Wrath almost doesn't hear him, but as Yuya pauses when the question's asked, he turns to Davos and I believe so. I do not remember. Right. I'm sure all of you have experienced the loss, loss of some kind. I lost my son in the last war against the Undar. And he stares at the fire. When was that? That was 20 years ago. He says the Undar raids. Uh, 20 years ago. Many think they were starving, so they came down to cell to raid my son. He was 20 years old when he died. He was a good warrior. Ra was his god. Like most young men do, they pray to 
the God of War. I often prayed to him when I was young. But then you grow up and you fall in love and things change, you know. I still remember the one that killed him. He got him in the back with a spear. And uh, you can see it's kind of lost for a minute. I mean, he looked at me before he died because I screamed his name. But uh, the one who killed him, he tried to carry him off, and I killed that one. I got my vengeance and hit him in the head with my axe and used my son's sword to kill him. Why would he carry your son off? Just they eat the dead, you know. I couldn't stand to see, or just to think about that. Keltiel looked away after he started talking about eating the dead, but she turns around. Well, I'm glad you are there for your son, that he was not alone. He nods. You can see he's obviously disturbed just even talking about it. And uh, for some reason he brought it up. And he says, um, uh, maybe, maybe they're returning again. Just like that. Just like 20 years ago. Oh, I don't, I hope not. I don't think I either of us were alive during it, but I wouldn't want another war like that. Not with all the horrors it brings. All men die. He kind of like wakes up as, as you say that, uh, kind of like a slap in the face to him it seems, and he's like, uh, in a good way though, because he's like, uh, I, they do. Did he die in his bed from disease? Did he die as a child? Did he die as an infirmed man? Did he die doing something stupid? No. He died fighting for whatever cause you believed in. I, if I were you, would think of his memory differently than sadness. He thinks on that nods. He says, he is a good warrior. Uh, maybe I should think of it as that. It not does not matter if he was a baker and could not swing a sword. Did he die with honor? Ah, he did at that. Then you have nothing to lament, if you ask one such as I. This is true. I do not think it. What's that? Ah, Eva stands up and it's the bear again, I think. Yes. Hunter <sighs> will stand up and look around. Did he follow us all the way here? I hope not. What a bear do such a thing. I think not. Are you sure it's a bear, Hunter? It sounds as a bear, but it may not be your usual bear. Deformed. Perhaps. Deformed. Desperate. Like the wolves. Hunter's gonna pick up a torch from the fire. Perhaps you can set some of your snares. Some of your traps. Slow it down or 
let us know when it gets close. They're set, but they're made for... They're not made for beasts of that size. I don't know what they'll do, if it will even stop it. You guys can go ahead and set your um, tokens up here. Oh, shit. For no reason. <laughs> just top down just map, because. huh? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can hear it getting closer, like it was the other night, circling. Hunter's gonna try to pinpoint where the noise is coming from. That one was over in the east. Evos is like uh, looking around, kind of frantic. He pulls out his long sword, and uh, uh, he says, uh, "To the north, uh, it goes down into the valley." Ah. Oh, what would you want? What do you want to do? It won't stop following us. Why does it not attack? It's waiting. Tonight I think it might. We're in the open. We're no longer in a home. It's got... instincts. That sounds more like intelligence. We should definitely keep watch. Girls, girls, Keltiel, uh, you ya. Do you, you want to maybe uh, sleep in the wagon? Hi. Hi. Not... How much protection could the wagon really give us? Uh, if it comes down to it, I will fight the the bear. And uh, if you have to, you make your way to Skore. That is Kelsey. silly. We should fight it with numbers, if anything. Yes, and if I need to use my fire, I should probably not be in the wagon. Mm. I think I'll stick to helping the group of you out. Not casting anything um, harmful. Hunter will actually start to find some larger pieces of wood and use them to light light them from the fire and start to stake out kind of a line, a circle around the camp further than just where the fire is. Mm, yeah. Wrath sees the wisdom in that and begins to assist. Okay. I actually have a... Uh... Pour the wagon close. He says, towards the fire, we want to defend the least amount of ground as possible. Kind of about right, right there. Yeah, just a, just a circle or a hexagon, however you want to do it, just mainly around the perimeter of the fire. Kiltiel will, after they're done with that, <clears throat> take the fire mead over to Wrath. You if you want this, mm, if the bear does attack, it may help you. What is this? This fire mead. Mm. For a time, it can make you stronger. Nice. What else does it do, uh, Rogue? I don't see it on here. Mm, let me pull this up here. I am mead. Uh, plus eight strength, body minus five, uh, int. With so... So plus oh, yeah. D8 strength and body. Well, yeah, when you when when you do your um 
uh, your mod, your rolls, uh, your strength roll, your body roll. Mm -hmm. You can add the D8 to your when it comes up to a modifier. Uh, you can put D8 exclamation point in the modifier. Okay. Um, also, you can get uh, some extra strength damage. Uh, so when you're doing your damage, you'll actually have the modifier as well. Okay. It takes away some intelligence, though. Yeah, the same amount of intelligence. So it's it subtracts intelligence or body. I heard body. No. Uh, yeah, positive strength, positive okay. body minus intelligence. Yeah, he looks at her very well. He reaches out. Don't, don't drink it until you see the bear. I'm aware of what to do. I have, well, I believe, seen such elixirs. Well, the mongrel make this, so I don't know if I would call it an elixir, but it does the job. He nods. We must survive. And we will. He turns Hunter. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. No, you go ahead. As Hunter's um wrapping a few arrowheads in cloth that he's tearing off of um either his own items or things that are just in the wagon. Um he looks at uh Keltiel and Yuya and do either of you have a poultice that will keep one awake? Um, no, I don't make those concoctions. Magic. Mm. No. I don't have something for that, but I do have something that can help with seeing in the dark just a bit. Do you think it's likely that this creature will come at the darkest point of the night? If so, you should sleep when it is not that time. Your bow will be useful. I don't need sleep. I don't know when the beast will come. I can sleep tomorrow in the wagon if we live. He shrugs. So the lither and Barry says it aids in longevity. Does that, would that help you stay awake? Um, that's possible. Uh, he could try it, I guess. Well, she'll start prepping that. It says it aids in pain, longevity, and eyesight. Plus eight HP, plus one strength and perception. Oh, that's what it was. It's the dark moon tonight. <laughs> uh, Yuya looks up to the sky and doesn't see the uh, sees the dark moon and face kind of gets a bit of a worried look mm, this is not a good omen need to be vigilant so maybe we should do this here um, if I take away global illumination uh, how does that look for you guys? Almost the same, honestly. I think your um, your light from the campfire is pretty bright. It's okay. Okay, is that uh, okay? Oh, I think the light as well from those oh, little yeah, torches. Oh yeah, probably, probably. I mean, I can still see almost as well as with the global Im illumination. So I don't know what you're trying to do, but. Yeah, that's cool. That's actually cool. We'll say um, because of the torches, actually, a little bit of illumination has lit up the uh, the camp. Uh, that's fine. I don't want to. It's not too big a deal. Um. And so you guys just get ready like this. Is that where you want to be positioned for um, the remainder of the night? Wrath. Goes over to this side. Yeah, Avos was stood over here by this. 
Caltiel will sleep by her sister, but she'll get out some of the lither and berry and hand it to Hunter before she goes to bed. I think we should pull the burr in, it, in the wagon in here. Yeah. This kind of open spot right there, mm -hmm. just inside the, so it can't just come and wreck those things without us seeing. Yeah. Ava says, that's a good idea. And he starts to go over there. As soon as Avos gets right here, everybody make a perception check. Oh no. Oh no. God, my perception checks are horrible. I notice nothing. <laughs> the fire is burning nice. Yeah. <laughs> fire, fire. Fire. Oh, the hunter fire? is baller on perception now. It's for reasons like this. Yeah. Wise. Holy shit. Oh, no. You can see it charging uh, charging all the trees over there. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, let me wipe out this old one. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no. And it's just fast, you know. It's, it's bigger than the fucking wagon. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, it's all clear for everybody to do a niche. And uh, who had the highest of perception? Is that Wrath? Yeah, Wrath. I did. Sure. Yeah, Wrath. You can see its face, too. It looks like it's its face has a little bit of that rod on it. Oh, shit. Uh, Priestess Yuya actually goes for... Oh, let me roll um, uh, Avos as a niche. Oof. This little old man. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's walking over there to grab the reins and... Uh, thing roars and... Uh, startles him. Um... It is now Yuya's turn. What do you want to do? So Yuya looks over to the beast with wide eyes. And she looks at the hunter standing there. And she is going to bless him for the combat. Oh, nice. And do you want... Go ahead and you roll the percentile, the spiritual influence. I should have let you guys do it last time anyway. Uh, that's 1d100. Yeah. Uh, if you do make your spiritual influence, it doesn't cost you a point. No. Oh, okay. And you're blessing who? Uh, I'm blessing the hunter. Okay. So it's a plus one to attack and a plus one to defense. For this combat. Mm hmm And also, I don't think she can make it. Oh, she can. So, um, she does use her move action, and then she's gonna burn a frenzy to uh, cast hard body on uh, Wrath. Uh, movement doesn't cost an action. Oh, uh, it costs two magical actions to cast bless. Oh, uh, okay, okay. And then that's it for you. Fail. Okay. Oh, nice. So scary. Rounds. Um, and while she was uh, blessing the hunter, kind of muttering, um, the blessings of Ghana, and, oh, Ghana, watch over us. Make sure his arrows fly free. That he's defended from any harm. And then runs over and does the same thing to Wrath, just laying on hands and stiffening his skin. <laughs> 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 this is gonna be a running joke. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely amazing. 
That is the, the most well named, the most aptly named. So. <laughs> uh, the beast charges and just it's gonna slap the uh, the burn uh, with a heavy attack. You and Keltia are gonna have to pull this wagon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, it, 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 it ends up hitting it, you know, and uh, let me see if it kills it, actually. Uh, it nails it uh, across the, the, the arm and the, and the head, and the burn ends up crying out and falling to the ground. Uh, the wagon kind of jolts with its force. Uh, that's it for the uh, beast, though. Uh, after that is wrath. Uh, so, let me figure something out here. So, if I run, what can I? Does that uh, when I move double my movement? How does that work as far as action points and everything? It won't affect uh, any of your attacks if you're using a melee attack. Or I can't reach it, up. actually, but... Um, so let me do this. Uh, how much is it to drink the fire mead? Um, two actions. And how long does that, how uh, long does that last for? Uh, it'd be this whole combat. 30 minutes, I believe. So Wrath looks down at the fire mead and shrugs and uncorks it and basically chugs it nice and um keltiel's turn okay <clears throat> keltiel hears the burn go down and leaps to her feet runs this way I think she can get one more. And all the while she's starting to chant, her finger's starting to glow red again, and she's going to cast Ignite on the beast. <laughs> that one fits. Alright, 18 on the Ignite spell. Mm -hmm. That's good. Is the music working for yep. you guys? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think the fire... It, that's a hit. I think the fire animation is knocking my uh, music out. Silly. 14 damage. And she's gonna do it again. Nice. You can see its hide's very thick, but uh, it does singe quite a bit of its side there. Oh, nice. It flinches from the first one. Hits again. Sixteen more damage. It has a uh, toughness of four. So it takes 12 more. Burns another part of it. I think she's... Can she burn a frenzy and do it one more time? Yeah. That's what she's going to do. Yeah. And that's a spell fail. Uh, three and under. Okay. Um, so what's that look like? Oh, she runs over there, points her finger at the beast, and mutters the word that ignites it. A portion of its hind quarters bursts into flames, and it roars and snaps back at the flames. Uh, but just a moment later, she does it again, and it catches on fire on the opposite side, causing it to twist its head back and forth, trying to snap at the flames. Uh, but she tries it a third time and uh, stumbles a bit in the snow and loses her wording. 
and it just fizzles out. Now, does this keep burning? I think it does. 2d6 per round, and it gets worse and worse unless it goes out. Yeah. So since it's not dead, we'll have to keep track of that. Yeah, let me put a little marker on it. And that was two hits, actually, so I'll put a little two marker on there. Okay. And it is now Hunter's turn. All right. So before this, I had wrapped some arrowheads in cloth. Mm. Um, so with that, I'm going to draw one. And I don't know how you want to treat it, but I want to light that with one of the torches. Okay. Um, so I don't know if that's an action or how would you treat that? Yeah, that's that's cool. That would be an action okay. to light it. So I have an action to draw, an action to light, and then I guess I'll frenzy to go ahead and shoot. Cool, that sounds perfect. You could kind of stand up on that stump and get a clear shot. Yeah. Or, yeah. I would light move forward. Do kind of a split movement thing where I go light and then walk forward with the frenzy and shoot. Alright, nice. Eight. Very good by me. Hey! Oh, that's a hit! So on the modifier, go ahead and put a, a, a d6 exclamation point. All right, nice. 11 more damage, and you can roll a uh, uh, percentile, 30% chance that it catches. Ooh. Oh. Well, still. Hunter steps up on the... Hunter quickly draws one of the arrows that he wrapped cloth around, ignites it on the torch, steps up on the stump and fires into the beast's side. The arrow sticks out. Thunk. Avos. All right, he draws his blade, and <sighs> actually, let's no, make. No, no. <laughs> let's. Uh, he's gonna do it. His son's dead. He's gonna shout his son's name actually, and try to uh, burn a frenzy and heavy attack the bear. Come on, Avos. Let's see what you got. There you go. Oh, nice. He hits a hit. Oh, gosh. <laughs> this thing has a couple of special attacks that I, I hope I get to use. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Or can just oh, fucking kill it. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Pep talk. That is nice. She Shoot. takes 24 damage. It falls... Uh, actually, nope, it doesn't even fall. He takes a big Shit. gash into it, though. 24. Yeah. He takes a big gash into it uh, as it's kind of rearing up, uh, stabs into it, and Yuya's turn. Oh, so Yuya is. I mm, just really want to cast that Eighth of Bolt again. Didn't work out that that last time. Um, hmm. Yeah, Avis is hurt. Looks like you get hurt somehow. I can't... Uh... I think you might have applied the damage instead. Oh, I put damage on Avis. Oh, no. Don't kill yourself, man. Hey, <laughs> he just pulled his groin muscle. <laughs> <laughs> so all you really does right now is just move up to hear a 
and she kind of looks over at Hunter with his bow, and then looks to the beast, looks down on her own hands, kind of seems a bit angry. She can't really do much at the moment. Um, and yeah, that'll be your turn for now. <laughs> okay. Little battle champ. The beast's turn. The beast is going to pounce him. Oh. And it's going to fumble, isn't it? Travis is going to try to dodge. Okay, so it goes to f pounce onto him, he moves to the side, it eats the snow, and then it stands back up and it's going to try to uh, swipe him. Actually bite him, try to bite into him. Avos defends, though. It's now Wrath's turn. I can't quite get there, but now that he's all meted up, he just, like, drips off his chin, and he runs over there as quick as he can. Um, so that'll get there about there. I don't know if that is good enough or not. you have to tell me. What's that? I'm sorry. Um, just talking about how close I can get. Uh, I can't quite. That was eight hexes. I'm not in range. Oh. Uh, yeah, unless you want to throw. No, I don't want to throw. Um, so running is not an action point. Uh, action, right? Um. No. Could I frenzy to move some more and attack, or how does that work? Um, no. Okay. I guess I would just um delay or ready in case he got close to attack the thing. I don't know. Yeah, you could uh, get into a defensive stance. Yeah, I'll do that then. He okay. just rushes and kind of jumps over the fire and runs, ah! screaming as he runs across the camp. Alright, Keltiel. Okay, so first of all, the beast should take some more burny damage. Yes. Go ahead and do uh, uh, you can do your damage um, and it would be times three now. I believe. Oh, 2d6 times 2. This will be the second round. It'll be 2d6 times 2. It's the same thing. 22. Nice. And the fire is starting to spread along its side. <clears throat> she will... Oh, she's still got points. She's going to try to cast it again. But she's going to move a little bit away from everybody <laughs> before she does it. I'm going to say the wagon. They probably move too. Yeah, trying to back up and get away from them. Well, one of them is dead, right? He's wounded pretty bad. Oh, he's, he's not, he's not dead, dead though. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Plus a fire, they would definitely move away from that. So that probably hit him. That's a hit. Yeah, my music keeps failing. Is it failing? Or? Oh my oh gosh. Man. 
Oh, nice. And that kills him. Nice. <laughs> I feel kind of bad. Why? <laughs> Because <laughs> Rath like drank the potion. Well, wasted potion, but other than that, got hard drank the potion. <laughs> Blue balls. Just ready to go. And so, Keltiel points her finger at the beast as it starts to be consumed by the flames from the previous attack, and speaks the word again. And this time. If you looked at her, you could almost see flames dancing in her eyes, and the entire beast is just utterly consumed. It's head to tail, all aflame, and lets out a, a roar as it stumbles forward and then crashes to the ground. And you notice, um, as it kind of whimpers, its last death throes, that uh, that disease as well had kind of eaten up quite a bit of it underneath too. There were some ribs showing. Um, uh, definitely was not at its full power or potential. Um, and like the other creatures, seemed to starting to degrade and everything. Uh, uh, Wrath, you get over there and you get into that defensive stance, and and that stuff is fueling through your veins and everything um make a uh a body check okay a target number six of course <laughs> <laughs> Boy, all right um oh, man. you uh you feel kind of enraged and i'm gonna let you go ahead and determine what happens by that um totally enraged and unable to kind of quench your thirst uh what would you do um oh man uh all right um i mean like visions and you know what i mean uh yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna roll a 1d2 to see kind of all right this is going to suck regardless, but I hope I roll a two. One is um, he thinks Avos is something he shouldn't think. Two is he yeah. thinks the beast is something he shouldn't think it is. Roll cool. two. Okay. So he rushes probably too close to this thing and just begins to try to hack this giant ball of fire. Um yeah, his eyes flame blue as he um like looks into the astral plane. Uh not even on purpose, but he just rushes forward thinking this is some creature, uh something. Um he's not even sure. But he's like dangerously close to the fire as he begins swinging his sword down upon it. The flames licking at his skin and his clothes. Rath, no, no, Keltiel says. What are you doing? I, Rath. Uh, she'll try to douse him. Okay, Avos is uh, starts to say uh, uh, same thing to his Rath. It's dead. It's dead. Yeah, he will continue to swing at it until he is physically stopped. Uh, yeah, and for a minute, when you finally stop. You've decimated this demonic being. Uh, you have this vision. And uh, I'm going to take you over to this to see it. Right. Oh my. Uh, everybody can see this? Yeah. Okay. For a minute in the darkness, you see all the guilt just you know more than that there's hundreds of them and you see this creature turn uh, you feel like it's a demon peering at you uh, through the darkness um, and you can kind of hear chanting in the background and um, as the uh, fire meat is starting to kind of 
spoil in you and kind of wither away, uh, so does the vision start to dissipate. goes on after that. Um, what is everybody else doing as I'm hacking, I guess? It's the... I would have ran to try to tackle him away from the fire. Yeah, he's completely focused that he doesn't even realize you're coming. You're able to easily spear him Goldberg style away from the fire into the snow. Avos tries to shout something to him. It's it's okay. It's okay. It's over. Garden yeah You hear him say in some other language that you're completely unfamiliar with. Actually, Yuya would would recognize that he is speaking in uh, what's that language called? Sorry, Enochian. Enochian. Mm -hmm. And you guys all notice his eyes glowing blue too. What yeah. is that on his his eyes are glowing? So I am try something. And she speaks back to him and Anokian in the same um inflections and everything. Uh, let me just whisper. Mm. It's a good idea. Yeah, I'll I'll let you know what what, what is being said, Rook. So I wish there was a way to double double whisper. Oh yeah. That's what I said. Okay. You want me to send that to you? Right, you? Oh, okay. Okay. What are you going to say, uh, Yuya? Oh, one sec, I'm just typing it. Oh, oh okay. Oh, it's just for Tira. I love this little button here uh, for quick whispers. Um, are you guys able to use that bottom left uh, little bubble? It's like a chat oh. bubble. Um, I think we'd have to enable it. Right? Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see all those bottom little emojis I have. No, I see it. it's not. I haven't enabled them in my bar. Oh, okay. Oh, the macro, we need a macro mm. bar, probably. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to find the whisper one. Where is the whisper one? It's the yeah. bottom, very bottom left. Uh, it, it has like a little, if you see a comic when they talk, it has a little bubble, chat bubble like that. And if you click on it, it has everybody's names. You can do a quick whisper oh, to I them. That. Um, I Wait, where? I don't, I don't see it either. You might have, I think that you have to like, um... You have to show it to us, yeah, like you somehow. have to go into the macro. Enable it for yeah, players. Something like that. Yeah. If it's a uh, macro, you have to reveal it to players. Okay. Any, but yeah, anyway, any, further, anyway yeah. Wrath hears this and he pulls back his sword again, um, trying to get up as Hunter's holding him down or knocked him down. And he turns and looks at you. His eyes are the the lightest blue almost glowing like a blue torch and they slowly slowly fade and he looks at Hunter quickly as if he's going to strike but his eyes begin to recognize what's happening and he's slowly becomes still There we go. Where... Where is the beast? Where did it go? Dead. 
You can see it burning over there in a pile of heap right next to you. No, the demon. Where is it? A demon. I saw it. It's oh boy. That's yeah. what's just fire mead. I no no. We won't do that again. <sighs> I say it made his eyes glow. Never seen that happen. No, that's not a usual thing that I've seen before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of looks over Rath, but curiously. And there's Markia. That's for sure. Says so lost memories. Keltiel's gonna look at. Wrath curiously, but head toward the burr and see if it can be saved. Sister. I We need to save the burn if we can. Oh, wait, let me look. Hunter will extend his hand to Wrath after shouldering his bow. He nods. Grabbing his sword with his left hand and reaching up with his right. Pull him up and look out into the look out into the wood. You said you saw something other than the bear. Yes, hundreds of these gelt, deformed and decimated, diseased, and one that stand and stood alone over them. A demon. I do not understand what is happening, but I know that there is something beneath what I cannot remember that tells me something is amiss, that this creature is from the hells. It will rise or has risen to plague these lands. I am sure of that. Mm. Hunter will look out into the wood, seeing there is definitely a distinct lack of gelt around, and looks back at Wrath. And you'll have to tell me more about this thing that you saw. I can only tell you what it looks like I still cannot remember and he kicks at the snow like a child angered some I am missing I cannot remember I <sighs> he just walks kind of off defeated angered You uh, cast this oh powerful healing spell, <laughs> and you can see its leg like coming back together and regenerating the blood, swelling back together, tendons, and uh, it seems relieved totally. Yeah. Kind of rubs up against you, licks mm -hmm. your face. Yeah, she smiles and puts her arms around the burr and petting its head. Ah, there, there. Uh, it's not much. I'm glad I could help. Oh, not much. We would never be able to pull this wagon ourselves. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I could do something. Oh, hi, good job. And that liquid makes people see demons, huh? It turns all the enemies into your demons. So... <laughs> I had it once, and that's not what it felt like to me, but... Mm. Well, He's not a northerner, so who knows? Uh, well, it was good then. We killed the beast. Don't have to worry about it chasing us anymore. Unless there are more. 
the night's not over. <clears throat> Going to go drink. Um, is it? It was. What was it that she had elderberries? What were they? What were they called? The berry thing. Um, I'll look at it. Start something else. <laughs> uh, lither and berry. Yeah, he would go ahead and take the lither and berries, and the plan still remains. I will stay awake this night and sleep in the morning. Uh, very well. Perhaps that is best. I was trying to get some sleep. Uh, Roth, are you going to be all right there? I do not know. I am. I cannot remember. I only know that a great darkness has visited us this night, and it is not that hunk of flesh. What I have seen. Yeah, I feel it is my duty to drive it from this place. Before I cared not, I worried not. Your lives did not matter. He looks up and kind of shrugs almost apologetically. But now, my heart is filled with purpose. My hand wishes to swing the blade, to press forward. It is as if it is my duty, my sworn oath. Every fiber in my being calls me forth. I do not understand any of this. Mm. Well, if you think it's your duty, maybe it'll help you unlock some more of your memories, but I'm glad you found a purpose there. Getting a bit troubling. Keltiel pours some water into a tin cup and hands it to Rath. Mm. You should drink and sleep. Sometimes sleep is the mind's greatest healer. He simply nods, takes the water, takes a long drink until it is gone. Avis comes back over to the fire. Mm. Well then. That was fine fighting, Avos. I thought that you were done for, but he didn't lay a hand on you. A claw. He smiles and he nods. Takes a drink. Says you as well, Keltiel. Without your fire, I would probably be dead. Oh, I don't know, but uh, it certainly did the trick this night. <clears throat> it smells terrible. She says all that burning fur. Maybe we should cover it with the snow after it's done. Uh, that could attract predators. Usually something I would worry about, but it seems like so few predators out anymore. We burn this corpse as well. Hunter says that he's kind of walking through, getting ready to stand his vigil. We leave no corpses unburned. He uh, goes up to Hunter, and she looks him over. Um, Hunter, uh, I have a question. Yes. Uh, 
Well, I'm not the most uh, proficient at fighting, really. Um, <laughs> never really needed it. Um, in the, in the village, anyway. Um, we're gonna be out here. Whatever these things are, if they're gonna keep coming. Uh, she gotta shuffles her feet a bit. Um, but it'd be alright, um, if you could maybe teach me how to use something like that. And she gestures to his bow. He looks at it for a moment, then looks at her. Sure. She smiles widely. Ah! Really? Yeah. We have a second bow. You know where it is in the wagon? Uh, I, I can go grab it. Um, we can practice when we have time. When we take breaks on the morrow, we'll practice. And he is kind of smiling from ear to ear as she nods. I, I uh, look forward to it. Um, thank you, Hunter. Mm hmm. And he walks past Yuya. She looks back, smiling at the hunter, and walks back to Keltiel by the fire, sitting down. It's good to know how to defend yourself, sister, but don't underestimate the value of your own abilities. I, I don't, I but if I get a bit tired here and there, if, you know, she looks down at her hands, things aren't quite working. And it'd be a last resort, but it'll be a, a good resort. That makes sense. I think it's what the moon goddess wants. Keltiel sits down and pulls her cloak around her, staring into the fire. Ava says, well then, I'm going to try and get to sleep. Uh, you, will, you will watch over us for a while, Hunter. The entire night. Alright then. He seems kind of surprised when you say the entire night and he's like, but he doesn't question you at all. And it puts his pack down and lays down by the fire. Wrath seems exhausted. He quickly collapses onto his side, throwing his furs over top of him and falling asleep immediately. Uh, when you are drifting to sleep, too, you hear the words uh, that you, you had said to you in Enochian, and it kind of reminds you some other woman's voice turns into that, her speaking to you in that same tongue, and uh, as you drift off to sleep, and pretty much everybody who sleeps that night ends up getting this same dream that vision in the distance and the guilt gathered around this demonic thing and that is where we will call an end to this session
That's a pretty spooky picture. 